Hello and welcome back to Spect. So I've been playing Blackstone Fortress basically into the late hours every single night. It is an intriguing game. It's got a story of epic proportions and it just needs bases to match. So I'll show you how I created my bases for the map, which contains for me the story at hand. So let's get started with the UR025. It's a beautiful model. Uh, it's fantastic in combat. And I just love the design. Nice smooth round and it'd be a lovely contrast against the idea that I have for a base. Now, even though I have an idea of what I would like in general, I always search uh, for a little bit more history that's unique to the character that make it pop and stand out. So you can see here, I'm just going through the books to see if anything catches my eye. Now the bases are pretty nice, but there's one thing that really stands out are the triangles that are everywhere. It's engaged throughout. And it reminds me of like little nanobots coming together for some reason, but anyway. So I need to remove the model from the base. And these are, as I said, beautifully designed and they're really easy to get started in this game because they're just push fit models. So thankfully it has a slotter base. If this has been glued on, I'll just have to cut it off. Or if you're looking to kind of glue these onto flat bases, you could just, you know, cut off the slotter. It's no issue, no problem. Anyway, let's put that aside and keep it safe. So next I decide on the colors, what I want and what I need. I want to show that it's an alien construct, so I can't go for normal earth tone colors or metals or metallics. I want to stick to the fortress idea and it's black stone. So obviously black, and kind of blue to highlight. And I want white for the kind of energy lines, like the potential power, the energy destruction, because it has to keep going. I can just imagine this thing constantly humming with ancient power throughout the whole system. Anyway, I have my paints here. Uh, I'll put them aside. And I want to start with a black. Just get a foundation of black going. Just base it as normal. If you've got an airbrush, it would take you seconds. No different here. Uh, just make sure you let it dry properly. I know that sometimes when painting with black, you're going to add white to it people get worried but these citadel paints are really good when you're just using the the paint directly out the pot because it's really thick so don't worry about that too much at this point plus we're going to cover over that color to make it a bit more subtle and that's where before i continue i decided to have a look at more research information i'm just going to keep a couple of pieces nearby it keeps my focus on what i need and where I want to end up with this result. And the designs are so interesting, as you'll see. Okay, now it's dried, well, I hope. <laughs> I move on to the blue and I just start from the center, create like effectively like a shadow area in the middle. It helps to guide the eye to that point. So when the model's on the base, you kind of focus in that area and that's exactly where the model's standing. It's fortunate that I have those pieces nearby because as I start looking, I start to realize something's missing. On the pieces, it has like a fog effect almost. And from a distance, it comes across as a gray in color. So, I'll go and get a warm gray, add to it. And as before, let it dry.
Okay, I'll put a wash down on the side to remind me uh, when I come back, that's what I need. And it helps if you do that in future, if you're laying down different colors. Back to the topic at hand. I'm adding in a wash now, I'm just coating it. And that helps to bring the colors together quite nicely. This is when I kind of realized that it, I, I didn't I'd leave enough time for it to dry. So it starts pulling the color from underneath. So I have to come back in and add more color, which is kind of not what I wanted to do. But, you know, it's happened. Rather than deleting it from the video, I show you why it's important to, you know, obviously let your washes dry or let all the paints dry uh, if you're going to layer them up, unless you're blending. Now I put this on the back of my hand just so that my fingers aren't in the way. I could have used a, a holder, but I find that a bit easier and it's quicker. Okay, so it's definitely dried at this point. And whilst I was out and about letting it dry, I came across this Tipex marker. It's a Tipex pen. What I like about it is that it flows consistently. It's easy to guide. It's a pen, it's not a brush. You know, I thought, well, why not? Let's give it a go. So as you can see here, just a simple line, creating those triangle the patterns that we saw before. And that's what I'm keeping to. The lines are consistently thick, but I could always come back in with a black afterwards and kind of bring those back in. stage. So maybe this could have been done with a sharpie but you know I want to try and stick to just using a brush trying to keep the things that we have at hand. With the brush all I'm doing is creating sharper edges. So I'm using a darker color that's already in the base combined with a black to almost give it like a 3D look. And also the high contrast brightens the initial white. It's just like one of those little tricks that artists play. And it works really well. So I just basically go ahead and shape the triangles uh, and change the thickness of the lines as and where I need to. So when you're doing that, just think about it before you make a start. Otherwise you'll keep trimming and trimming and you know, it ends up becoming um, uneven. And if you're like me, you probably won't like that. So right here, I'm taking a closer look and I'm not really happy with the way it's come out. The Tipex has kind of bobbled and caused issues. So I go get some more information again, have a look, because it just didn't come across right. There's something missing. It's just that it's uneven and it just looks really bad. So I decided to remove it with a mold line remover. And I scrape away and uh, that's when I start to notice a contrast between the smooth and the rough. But initially at this point I was fed up. I had spent all that time, it was really frustrating and you know, it's not nice to undo your work, but it happens sometimes. <laughs> well, you learn. Use it as a learning process. Anyway, that's not what I felt at the time. So as I've done this, I realized like there was a smooth area texture and I really liked it. And the little bumps that come naturally base kind of looks like rubble or like little stones. So I thought I would keep it. So even with something this rough, you can always recover it. So I come back in with the black, get that on there. Even coat from the beginning, 
the base and foundation is right, everything else is going to work. This time I leave it to dry. <laughs> Next I grab my blue, and again, this time I come with a bit stronger blue, because I'm going to be washing it back anyway. I've got that there, it's covered, it's how I want, I'm just creating that shadow effect, so it's not a perfect circle. Kind of give shape to a body on top. I leave that to dry. Next up is a grey again. And you may have noticed the last time I was painting with a grey, I paint from the centre to outside or outside from the centre away. And this is to create directional lines pointing towards the model in the middle. Uh, it's kind of like a little trick that gets played in the eye. So I do that and the contrast actually creates for a nice edge. You could actually do this effect around the edge of the base as well, as if you want to, and it does look good on the board. I didn't actually do it in this video, but I have done it for one or two models. And I even create one or two ghost lines of substructures underneath where the power lines would be. After it dries, and properly this time, because <laughs> the last time it didn't, I come in with a wash and I wash that over thoroughly. And I let it dry. Didn't come through strong enough. So I come back again and wash it through once more. And that kind of blends it a lot more and stops the base from popping too much to take away from the model at the top because these are some beautiful models. That's drying and it already looks better. Now, this is when I come back to the white lines and I decide to paint it this time. And I use the base coat from Citadel for the white, but it's a lot thicker, but it's still kind of guided. And you can see that I'm just going near the substructures, but not painting over those substructure gray lines. Now take your time with this. The more time you take, the better it'll be. Now, don't worry about that little bump in the middle. You can always place like little rocks over there if you want to. I just make it part of the base or depending upon where the model stands, they may actually be standing over that part. Because again, the models have been designed really well. And I had a little variation there of a triangle going the opposite direction because on all my other bases so far, they've all been going the same direction. Add a few more additional lines just to basically add guidance first of all where I want it so it's not too dominating. I will make this one thinner than the one on top. So it looks like it's underneath. And don't worry about any mistakes like that. You can just come back in with the black and just tidy it up. You must make sure that this dries. Don't paint it on the white unless it's dry. Okay, <laughs> just bump the camera there. <laughs> okay, so I went back in with the black, just created those outlines, and that becomes part of the kind of power system in my mind's eye. And we'll get our model on. As you can see, it's just push fit, so straight onto the base. And I really do like the push fit idea. No glue, it means there's no customization, but it works really well when building an instant play. And that's what you really want with Blackstone Fortress. So I'm just using my tool there just to push it back in. And that's just a scraping tool that I got from Warhammer Conquest, just in case you're wondering. Well, he's done and he could join his buddies in battle. Wait, before I do that, something I might want to do here, uh, which is to add in the... Uh, connectors between the power lines on either side of the base and on the slot where the model is pushed in. So just take your time, add it in, and if you do it right, you won't have to worry about the black. But make sure you do color in that line in the same format on the base. I'm happy. 
happy with that. I'll edge the base later on the grey. Works really well with the board, I feel. Let's put him with his buddies and let the combat commence. That's it for now. I will be doing more Blackstone Fortress in the future. And I look forward to having you guys join me on the campaign. So I'm going to reset my campaign and I'm going to go through from the beginning. And I hope you join me in my quest and my exploration adventure. But for now, that's enough. I'm tired and it's really late. And as always, I appreciate the time that you spend here. I want to say thank you. Peace out. Again, that thank you, Adam Fox, Peter Nicholas, and Miss Cast Terrain. I've been watching you for years and I appreciate that you came and dropped a comment. So go check out his channel. It's playtime.